thanks for having me and this opportunity to come along and do uh, a talk about some of my practice. Um, yeah, my name's Alex. I'm one of the librarians at the University for the Creative Arts. Um, so we are a creative arts specialist in the southeast of England, offering um, courses across the creative disciplines, so creative arts, uh, creative technology and creative business. Um, so my role as a liaison librarian, um, there are two sides to it. So firstly is supporting uh, collections development and also uh, teaching information and visual literacy skills um, to our schools of fashion and textiles and business schools for the creative industries. So a lot of the work we do at UCA in terms of workshops is embedded within courses, so they tend to be quite tailored to the units that students are working on and tailored towards their um, assignment briefs. Um, so I thought I'd just start by talking a bit about, well, how do fashion and textile students uh, generate ideas? Where do they get their, their inspiration and information from? Um, and there's just a couple of nice, nice quotes here from uh, fashion, fashion researchers, and one of them is, is one of our lecturers at, at UCA. Um, so yeah, fashion and textiles uh, designers, students are obsessive collectors. They're always on the hunt for new and exciting ideas and things that will inspire them. So the need to gather and source material in the creative process is essential for feeding the imagination. Um, and this can be conducted at any time, and this sort of goes back to uh, some of the things that, that Rosie was saying. Um, yeah, fashion and textile students, they're gathering their ideas, their inspiration um, from all over the place. The creative research process, um, uh, yeah, is, is like a thread that many students follow along. Um, yeah, and so students gather um, their ideas, their inspiration from lots of different sources. Um, fashion and textiles is quite interesting as a discipline because they're often looking very much at what's happening next. They're very future forward. So as well as um, sort of traditional resources, we think of uh, books, magazines, zines, look books. Um, they're also engaging quite heavily in social media. Um, so looking at places like TikTok. Um, and Instagram to gather ideas for collections uh, or, or uh, to see sort of practice emerging from, from runway. So the environment, the visual environment that they're engaged in is really fast paced. Um, it's very future forward. And because of the nature of that, something that um, we find with students is they don't necessarily always take a lot of time to really look and think about some of the wider meanings and contexts behind the images that they're using in their academic work. So something that we've been working on at UCA is um, to develop visual literacy workshops to really help and support students with using images in their academic work, really thinking about how they can think about some of the, the critical contexts of them. Um, and we do this through uh, practice of slow looking um, and a five step uh, visual literacy approach. Um, so I discovered this book by uh, Tishman called Seeing Slowly. Um, it's a really lovely book and talks a lot about um, how uh, we view images uh, in, in, in current culture and how current culture is very fast paced. Um, so slow looking is an important counterbalance to the natural human tendency towards fast looking. And as technology has developed, you know, we all use social media. Um, you know, I, when I'm a bit bored, I will sit on my phone and scroll through Instagram. And it's very easy to engage in, in that fast paced culture and not really think about what you're, what you're looking at. Um, so slow looking tends to be uh, underemphasized in general education as well. Um, we're starting to see this at UCA. Um, we have um, a lot of units now delivered over three to six week periods. So students there, the actual uh, education that they're having is really quick, it's super, super quick. Um, and looking closely is also a shared human value. So the idea that looking and discussing your ideas with someone can bring you closer together or form some sort of community. I'll talk a bit about that at the end. Um, so one thing that I found really helpful because I'm quite an early career, um, library and information professional was discovering this book by Brown and Company, um, which is called Visual Literacy for Libraries. It's a really fantastic book and um, goes through how to find, um, evaluate and manage information. And what's great about the book as well is it has lots of activities and worksheets in that you can use and adapt for your practice, for your teaching. Um, so one of them that I've adapted is uh, this five-step approach to uh, interpreting and analyzing images. So looking, reading, examining, describing, 
and checking understanding. Um, and really, it's the last step that we try and encourage students to be the most kind of critical or philosophical in their thinking with, um, so that they are thinking about how they can use an image, describe it, and then go off and conduct further research with that image. Um, so yeah, one example um, that I do is a really structured um, uh, process of analyzing images. So this was for a uh, fashion branding course and theories and history. So they were taking images from runway, contemporary images and culture, and using them as a way to kind of analyze wider context, social context. Um, so this is Kanye on um, the catwalk for Balenciaga. Um, last year, spring, summer, 2023 collection. And it was around this time that actually the war in Ukraine was, was starting as well. And um, this student in particular um, uh, used this as a kind of way to think about fashion and, and how it ties into like war and utilitarian wear and things like that. Um, so the process really is, is quite guided. So students follow through each step and fill out each section, or it can be more fluid and they can just fill out sections that feel, feel most kind of pertinent to them. But really this is a way to help them either create keywords or generate ideas so that they can really start verbalizing um, something that's, that's really visual. Um, often the worksheets that I put together are um, tied to the unit brief as well, so I will select images that tie into their syllabus, um, and that can be a really nice way to then discuss some of the wider themes that are appearing in their, in their syllabus. Um, and I also put links in using QR codes, so if students want to go and read a particular article, maybe that relates to the image, they can gather, gather ideas that way as well. Um, and then there's another example here, this is a more kind of open um, example where I take a selection of images and even mood board them, um, and students can use that five-step approach to then mind map essentially from, from an image, either again to generate keywords or um, to just explore some of the wider sort of context or themes in the image. Um, this one, in, for example, was just looking at gender fluidity and fashion and changing ideas around masculinity in, in fashion and fashion branding. Um, so why is it important? Why, why is it really important to start practicing this, 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 this process of slow looking? Um, well, um, I don't know, you might have seen this if you're on social media before. Um, this, of course, is um, uh, Pope Francis. So that is an, an, an AI generated photo. Um, so that's Pope in um, this kind of amazing, slightly badass looking um, Balenciaga puffer jacket. Um, it's great fun, um, but it's fake. Um, so this was generated by AI and shared on social media, and it was a sort of viral, viral hit, really. It was sort of shared by a lot of people. Um, so yeah, so we're starting to see um, in wide culture, but also in education, um, the use of generative AI. Um, and so this raises many questions and implications for things like visual literacy trying to understand where and how images are created. Um, and as we know, as library and information professionals, uh, visual dis or misinformation relies just on the right amount of um, kind of bonkers and outrageousness and sort of mundane to trick people into sharing it. Um, and students, our students at UCA have started to use some of these tools. So this tool in particular is called Mid Journey, um, and they're starting to explore their ideas in it. And there are a lot scare, more scary examples out there. There are things like um, staging the moon landing and all sorts of weird things. And some of them are quite, quite, look quite convincing. So it poses many questions for visual literacy, understanding how students evaluate images. Um, also, in a more practical sense, um, you know, thinking about gener generative spaces, the library is a generative space. This also extends beyond the industry. So, in um, the fashion industry, recently we saw the first AI Fashion Week, um, and so actually sitting with students and talking to them about maybe how images are created, this can be a really useful tool to interrogate practice. But even more so with these AI tools, a lot of them are perpetuate white and Western um, biases that we see in visual culture. So it could be a really good and important talking point um, to, to have those conversations with students about how these images are created, how the data and information is pulled into these, these tools. Um, yeah, and it may be an important way as well to impart the value of research process and questioning. 
Um, yeah, so visual literacy workshops as generative spaces. Um, the things that I've sort of learned really is just about facilitating an open space where students can either create new ideas or practices or interrogate the meanings behind some of the images that they're using in their creative practice. Um, it can create a space to have open discussion, and I find it quite interesting, um, you know, everyone sees the world very differently, and students are often very earnest about the ways that they see and engage with, with images, and that can just be a really lovely conversation to have. Um, also with fashion and textiles as an industry and as a wider curriculum, um, as they adopt these artificially intelligent technologies, then um, imparting slow looking with students can just be a really, could be a really good way to help with critical thinking um, and think about where information comes from and how images are created. Um, thank you very much. Uh, if anyone has any questions or would like to collaborate, please get in touch. I'm very happy to um, share my slides or any of my teaching um, materials, um, lesson plans, things like that. I'm always happy to, to collaborate and share with those. So um, thank you.